Overactive and underactive muscles, probably one of the most challenging concepts for so many people to learn as they're trying to pass their NASM exam. And we've put out other videos in the past on the specific overactive and underactive muscles that you need to know with the overhead squat, the single leg squat, all the assessments. But in this video, I wanna give you guys a better visual way of thinking about the overactive and underactive muscles. Because I know from working with so many students, if you can picture, better picture what's happening not just when you're there for the exam, which obviously we want, that's gonna be helpful, but even picture what's happening when you're out in the gym working with clients, that's where the real magic happens. I want you to be able to apply this stuff. And you might be like, why is this guy holding a light right now? And I want you to think about overactive and underactive muscles as either shining too brightly or maybe not enough. And it's actually a pretty good analogy when you think about it because when it comes to muscle contraction, when it comes to overactivity, underactivity, we literally have this little electrical signal telling our muscles to contract or not. That's how we move around, right? That's how our nervous system controls muscle contraction. So when you guys are going through and not only thinking about and memorizing certain areas, like let's use the overhead squat, for example, with the arms going up overhead, we talk about maybe there being overactivity in the lats if someone's restricted there. Now the mistake a lot of people make is thinking about overactivity is just tightness. And if it was just tightness, NASM would have called it tight, right? You got a tight lat, but it's more than that, overactivity. And so if you guys can visualize, and I, I give you guys this, because this is literally the way that I learned overactive and underactive muscles all those years ago when I got NASM certified, and I didn't have these great videos to go off of, but literally visualizing what areas of the body might be like, bam, shining too bright, too much signal going there. And so I want you to think about that. The lats being that example, boom, we've got not just tightness in the tissues, which there is that sometimes, there may be some flexibility, mobility issues, but oftentimes, I have more signal from the brain going to that area telling it, hey Joe, stay contracted, right? We want you to stay a little bit contracted. And so we've got a little bit too much signal, too much brightness. So our goal then, through some of our mobility, through some of our flexibility, right? The corrective exercise that you are learning in the NASM method, even activation of those underactive muscles, goal is not to turn it off, just to turn it down a little bit. Say, okay, cool. As we go through, obviously I want to have muscle contraction, but it may be obvious in this area that there's a little bit too much happening. And so I think it's a really powerful way of thinking about it because it also showcases the fact that for most people, as you want to apply this stuff, overactive and underactive muscles, stretching only is usually not the answer, all right? Stretching is not the answer. Sometimes it is gonna be a part of the equation, but it's not gonna resolve it all because if we have overactivity, there's a signal component to that. So I just really like this idea of this light shining a little bit too bright. And you can apply that to all the overactive areas and the different assessments that you're learning. And then underactive, just like it sounds, it's the opposite. At no given time is the light probably all the way off. And now this has become a really common conversation, especially surrounding like the hips and glutes. Maybe we've got overactivity in the rectus femoris, right? The iliopsoas, your quad, your hip flexors. And so we may have underactivity in the glutes. Lots of people need glute activation. I mean, I would say almost everybody that I train were doing some sort of glute activation in their prep, in their prime, in their warm up. Cool. But it's not that it's turned off. It just might not be bright enough, right? Or it's flickering in and out, right? Like a little strobe light there. And we just want to get it shining brighter. So not only thinking about application, I want to get it shining brighter. I want more signal in that session. That's one reason why we do glute activation prior to going into things like heavier squats and lunges so we can get more signal going there. But if I do it over time, hopefully it's going to counteract a little bit of that underactivity. So simple way of just visualizing for you guys, but I know from having conversations, even with many of you from the YouTube channel, those inside of our free Facebook study group, as well as all of the students that we work with every year, is the more that you can visualize and picture these things when you're in the gym, the more you can take it out of the book and bring it to light, generally the better it's gonna stick. And this light one always helped me. So, hey, you wanna be crazy? Boom, get the light, get in front of the mirror, all right? Make sure no one's watching because it's gonna look a little bit weird, but hopefully it's gonna help you commit this stuff to memory. Was this helpful? Do you like this kind of stuff? If so, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're committed to putting out great content like this that's not only gonna help you pass your exam, but also make use of all the information that you're learning. And if you haven't gotten your hands on our free NSM study guide, check out the link in the description below.